Okay, shot.
That is Miami Show Sound that we're playing out with Richie Live in about a second or two. We can play some of the songs in the Miami Show Band we play. It's simple Simon Says. Let your backbone slip, Simon Says. Put your hands on your head. Simple Simon Says. Bring them down by your side. Simple Simon Says. Shake them to your left. Simple Simon Says. Now shake them to your right. Okay, folks, welcome to part A of, of Paranormal Tech. My name is Philip. Special guest tonight is Sean Walters. We're starting off with part A, so get your tea, your biscuits. It's going to be a long one, and we're starting part A now. Okay, folks, let's get straight into it. Sean, you should get your chair in underneath the tree there. We get up in a minute. So let's get it up and running guys, and you're all very welcome. Just gonna get everything set up now. Uh, we're gonna do part A and part B as we said. So we're just gonna move the, into our locality where we're gonna go. In here to our special guests, just give us two seconds. Set up the camera in a way so you can see it all as well. Turn around the camera as well and we'll get everything up and running. Just give us two seconds guys. It is live television as is best. And as you're well know now, anything can happen in our live stream. So we're just gonna try and turn around the camera. Turn around the camera, let's go. Let's turn around the camera. So welcome guys. So we're just gonna try and turn around the camera here and bring it down here to Sean Walters. So good evening folks, you're all very, very welcome to another episode of Paranormal Tech. As a matter of fact, let me take it off my hand and we'll, we'll put it back to the stand in a few. Good evening folks and welcome to another episode of Paranormal Tech live on YouTube. Um, as we did say as we came back from Greece that we would do a live stream in relation to the Miami show band and Captain Robert Nyrak. So you joined us in part A. We don't expect many people to watch today, especially the bank holiday weekend as well and weather that we have in Ireland that's not going to last for much longer. Um, one of the reasons, before we get into our paranormal investigation today, one of the reasons that I did say why I do part A and part B today is one of the reasons why is we're taking a wee break, paranormal tech. We're actually going to take a five week break after today. We're going to take a big long rest from Seth and Caroline. Um, one of the reasons why we're taking a break is that we are moving house in, in the month of September. We're moving to a new house and we're looking forward to that. Number two is Leah is um, going for a big operation in Crumbling Hospital. That's going to take place in October. So that ha we have to do that as well. And great news on the front, as everybody probably does, probably knows by now, that Caroline and myself are going to have a new baby in our family. And Caroline, we just found out after coming from Greece, that Caroline is going to have a new baby. So let's double thumbs up and let's hope, pray to God that everything goes right this time and we have another new member of family. So I'm delighted. So Caroline is watching out at home. So everybody knows now that Caroline's going to have a baby. So we're going to really take care of take care of Caroline and make sure that she has a safe journey in this pregnancy. So we're, we're absolutely delighted and um, let's hope that everything goes well. So that'll be up to Caroline and Caroline will deliver the news as uh, as every month goes by. We will be going to hospital every two weeks because um, if you don't know the situation between myself and Caroline, some of our moderators would do. That is why myself going to hospital every second week and we have Leah who's having an operation in Crumbling Hospital as well and we have to move the house so that's why we're going to take a wee break after today for about four or five weeks possibly six weeks and that's why I advertise the Halloween special as well so before we're bringing in to our special guest our special guest is a member of the paranormal team for the last year we're actually over a year and a half now doing our live streams now and back in October in two and 19 or 18 I met a man named Sean Waters and Sean Waters was a man of genius and um, education and high knowledge of anything that we ever do in relation to any of the investigations that we have done uh, before we went on holidays in Greece uh, new evidence came in relation to Captain Robert Nyrak in relation to Ravensdale Wood that's going to come into part B but we're going to go to part A now we're going to get straight into it and let me introduce you to the one and only Sean Waters Good evening, Sean. 
How do you do, everybody? Sean, you're very welcome. Great to and see you. And yeah, I have you. to say, Sean, you're looking really, really well. Ah, uh, well, I had the old beard trimmed off. Yeah, the beard's well shaved off. Your hair... Sh but you're looking, you're yeah. looking really, really re well, Thank Sean. You. Dear. You're looking you. really, really well, Sean. Um, but just for for anybody who ha hasn't met you before, this is Sean Waters. Sean Waters has just comes in a few investigations, and Sean does have great, great knowledge of, of the history of some places. We do go to Sean, don't you, Sean? Yeah, I do. Sean, I've taken you to a location now, Sean. The one of the reasons I took you to this location is we have done a many a paranormal investigation, and uh, the Miami Show Band has come into the, our. our um, into our paranormal investigation in relation to Captain Robert Nyrek. Well, we won't start our investigation yet with Captain Robert Nyrek, but Sean, I've taken, just before we do start, can you all hear us live and well, make sure, can you just let us know, can you hear us live and chat before we move on? Because when I start talking to Sean, I probably won't stop. Yeah. So just let us know if you can hear us well and chat. Let's just let us know, because we are beside the motorway as well. Just let us know and chat before we move on. Yes, so everybody said they can hear it loud and clear. So we have our moderators there, Aaron Reeds, and we have Jill again, and we have Caroline on chat as well. So we have most of our moderators that are going to stay tuned. To this. We don't expect everybody to be watching this. So there's Trevor as well. Hello, Trevor Howard as well. Hello, Trevor. Trevor, I, want, I need to speak to you as well. Make sure you try and c communicate with me, Trevor. I need to speak to you as well. So, Sean, you, Caroline says you look well. So, Sean, I took you to a location known as the Miami Show Band Massacre back in 1975. That's when it happened, yeah. The 31st of July. Yes. Um, let me just bring you to a quick brief and you can start telling the feet. In 1975, back we, we start, we, should, we, we go back to the 1960s, Sean. Back in the 1960s, Ireland uh, were into the show bands in a big way. Yeah. And Ireland in the 70s, um, well, we'll say early 60s, moving on to the 70s, we, the Ireland had a new band coming up on the... It was going to be as big as the Beatles, known as the Miami Show Band. Correct. I, I think I attended one of their concerts, yeah. Yeah, the Miami Show... So, the Miami Show Band, John, I'm just going to give a brief history of it, and then I'm going to bring you into the story. So, back in 1975, the 31st of July, the Miami Show Band were coming from Banbridge. That's right. They are only after doing a, uh, a gig in Banbridge. Oh, and uh, yeah, Banbridge. Banbridge. Yeah. And uh, they're just after finishing a gig. And like all back in back in the sixties and back in the seventies, uh, there was always checkpoints. Okay, yes. there was always checkpoints due to the hard border in Ireland and Northern Ireland. But believe it or not, Sean, uh, the, the last meal the Miami Show Band had was actually an Irish stew in the Banbridge. So back in 1975 on the 31st of July, roughly about half past two in the morning, That's right. in roughly around that time, the Miami Show Band left Banbridge to head to their next location up towards Dublin. So we just turn around the camera here for a second. So that's the old road. We can't show. We can show it like this. That's the old road down there. That is no longer in use. There's a new motorway now. So Sean, uh, back in 1995 on the 31st of July, Miami Show Band were heading down this old road, heading back, heading towards Newry. They could be going Dublin, to Dundalk. Yeah. They could be going to Dublin. Dublin, yeah. And they were stopped by. Um, a checkpoint by soldiers. That's right. Oh, so, so they thought. So they were. So they thought they were soldiers. So they were pulled in here in this locality where, where we give them a little guided tour. Um, on questions of the night, we just show them here where it is. This is the road here where they were pulled in. So when they were pulled in here, Sean, on this, this we're, we're actually standing on the bus stop as we speak. They were pulled in here. Um, the soldiers on the night were having the, the bit of fun and the bit of crack with them and they were told to pull here in this laneway which they thought was very uh, with, with normal. normal and uh, in the show band times they usually have a bottle of coaching or a bottle of whiskey and they have a bit of crack and they share their the drinks with the soldiers on the checkpoint and so on and they're just quick a quick look in and off you go but on this night sean unfortunately this did not happen so they were told to get out of the minibus so they were told sean to line up outside the road and the soldiers in questions were checking the vehicle out, okay? And uh, everything was going right, they were having the crack, they were asking, how was your mother, how was your father, everything was going right, until something happened, John. Uh, an English soldier came on the scene, okay? On the scene, on the time of 1975, 31st. With a very posh accent. With a very, very posh accent. But on this time, um, the attitude changed on this checkpoint. The soldiers started to get really nervous and anxious, so they lined them all up outside the van, up along the side of where we're standing. Um, the soldier, this English soldier, took over the situation at the time. Um, 
there was the two standing survivors of the Miami show band Stephen I don't know what the other man in name is you know can you remember but anyway they were asked the soldiers on question the night could they go back into the band and take out their clarinet and their tribone and the musical instruments so they took out two so when Sean they took out the two instruments they laid them on the ground here right just laid them on the ground where we're standing and all of a sudden Sean matter three or four seconds after taking out the equipment they went back into the line instead of being back in the line where they were they actually stood right beside the van so they were at the back of the line where the members were so instead of being at the back they stood at the front because they're only after taking out the musical instruments and all of a sudden there was a massive massive huge explosion and the two boys that took out their equipment were thrown over, not these trees at the time, but other trees, and they were flung into the field in here, Sean, way into the field. And the whole hedge here went up in fire, the trees went up in fire. Uh, they could see the van was up in bits, and there was, they, were exp- they were able to tell us there was bits of bodies all over the road here, Sean. There was a, a terrible, terrible uh, um, time that happened here. But the two of the survivors, Sean, that they were blown into the field in here, were able to continue on and tell the story on what happened after it. Now, it was a well-planned situation, what happened here. They tried to blame the Miami show band that they were um, terrorists from bringing bombs from Northern Ireland to Dublin and all different parts of the locations. Yeah, to force Dublin to have a hard border so that the IRA couldn't go back and forth as they pleased. But the only mistake that they made, Sean, on that night, okay, that the two survivors that were blown into the field from this impact, mm. from this explosion in, back in 1975, is the only mistake they made, the British, I'm going to say the British because we know it was British, is that the two survivors that were blown in over the hedge here were able to continue on and tell the story of the Miami show band massacre. And the reason why they called it a massacre is because they, they planted a bomb inside the front seat of the driver's seat but it it, dec- it dis- what you call the how, how it, it, it re what's the word I'm looking for well, it exploded it exploded prematurely prematurely which they did not expect to happen they were hoping that they were going to put the bomb in oh, off they go and let them drive off the road and then blow up and kill every one of them but unfortunately it fell back on them and this story of the Miami show band massacre needs the story needs to be told exactly from from point A to point B and uh, we, we, before we finish, this is one of the reasons why I like to be, I like the stories to be told. But anyway, the, the only story the, the, of the night is, when they, it was a well-planned situation, John, mm. but the only well-planned situation backfired is they didn't kill the other two survivors at the Miami Show. Well, they tried. They put a dumb dumb bullet into Stephen. That's right, yeah. Lying in the field. That's right, and hoping that, that it was going to explode. Which, in which them. exploded into 16 parts in his body. In his body, yes. The, the, when these two survivors of the Miami show bands were thrown in with the explosion right it took them a couple of seconds to come around when they did come around they could hear three or four more members of the Miami show band still up on top of this bankway here Sean yes they called out on a few of their names which some of them did not uh, reply and there was a young lad called Robert he was a young apprentice of the Miami show band they could hear him crying out for his mummy crying out for his mommy the lead singer of the Miami show band he was a very very good looking fella and there was another survivor of the Miami show band. what they did is Sean from this bank here they crawled down to the two survivors that were calling out for them down in this bank which we'll show them in a few minutes and um, what happened next was unreal um, Stevens what they did is the two Miami show bands they watched so many films and they actually played dead so what they heard is the British soldier on questions on that night told the Irish soldiers to make sure there was no survivors standing. Now the two Miami show band survivors were able to tell the story. So the British intelligence soldier on questions on that night in 1975 gave direct orders to the soldiers to believe to be Irish soldiers. Leave no witness. Leave no witness, kill everything on sight. So the Miami sh- show band survivors crawled down to, to the two survivors in the field. As they were crawling down, the English-British soldier gave direct orders to follow down and leave nobody standing. The British soldiers, uh, we, we won't call them British soldiers, they were actually Irish intelligence soldiers, UVF. UVF soldiers, were given direct orders from this British soldier on question on the night, 1975, to get down in the field and leave nobody standing. Is that correct? So what happened is, next was unbelievable. 
the lead singer, he was actually a very, very good looking chap. A very, very look. He was, he was really, really wonderful from, from the explosion. He was shot in his face 21 times in his face in this field here, Sean. 21 times he was shot in the face, given direct orders from this British shoulder. They moved on from him to another member and the two survivors were able to see this happening in this field. Can you picture at half past two in the morning to be blown in and left in the field to hear the crying of Robert crying out for his mommy? When Robert cried out for his mommy, Sean, the British soldier says, make sure there's nobody standing and they shot him dead. They moved on to the next one and shot him dead. I believe that Robert was actually lying beside Stephen, but the, in questions on the night, the soldiers thought Stephen was dead because he was playing dead. So they moved on, they shot the other man, Fran, 21 times in his face. They moved on to the next one and shot him dead. But at this time, the other um, a musical uh, magician from uh, Miami Shore and snuck out of the field and made his way onto the motorway. Once they were gone. Yeah. Yes, once they were gone, and flagged down a truck which, who would not pick them up, and then a, a young couple picked them up and brought them to Newry Garda Station. Newry, um, uh, um, um. RUC station. The RUC station. Still in the north. And on the night in questions, when he told the story in relation to the Miami show about what happened, the doctors kept coming and giving medication and drinks, but he did not trust anyone at the time, so he kept putting the medication down his sock, so he wouldn't trust anybody. He asked, was there anyone gone out to the scene? They said they had to wait till everyone calms down, fly helicopters in, because they were feared God they were going to go to get shot. But the story goes on, Sean. It's, it's an investigation that goes on since 1975. There's roughly my story about it. And I, what I want you to tell the folks, Sean, is this is your first time here at this location. Yes. We're going to walk the fields and we're going to show you the area. We're going to do a spare park session in the fields where they're all shot dead. Sean, the Miami show band, I'm just going to come closer to you, Sean. I'm just going to come in here. So I brought Sean a little chair to sit down. <laughs> Sean, the Miami show band, in your words, who were they and what were they in, back in the 1960s? They were the most popular travelling show band in Ireland. In Ireland. And they were all brilliant musicians. And they were going to be, Sean, the next, my, uh, the Beatles, weren't they? They were, going they to were the Irish Beatles, if you like, because yeah. about that time the Beatles came on the scene. Uh, they wrote their own songs, most of the yeah. songs they, they did. And John, can I just say, back when the Miami Show Band were up and running in 1975, mm. they weren't just a band, John. They were a mixed band between Protestant and Catholic. There was two Protestants and three Catholics. And they didn't give a shite. No, there was no... There was no arguments, there was no... No, they loved their music. One of them said, we ate, slept, drank, and drank our yeah. music. And, uh, Music was their passion. And they didn't mind who was in the no, audience either. They didn't know, and the people of the Irish nothing, community, yeah. Catholic and Protestant, all mixed together, and they loved it, didn't they, Sean? It had nothing to do with terrorism or racism or any sectarianism or anything. They just did their music. Um, we're not ignoring chat. We have moderators there, Carlene's there. We're just going to keep the story going with Sean, and then when we get time, we would talk to chat. Um, Sean, there, there is a documentary on Netflix in relation to the Miami Correct. show band. It's called Remastered uh, the Miami Show Band Massacre. Sean, Remastered. And Sean, can I ask you a question? What's your... Um, I know you when, when we did our live investigations in Raven's Dale Wood, hmm. and I really didn't really pay attention when you were uh, telling me about the, the Miami show band were on Netflix, the documentary. Sean, I've watched this you've watched it you're on the scene now where it happened this is your first time ever being at this location yes, yes. Sean tell me in your own words about what happened that night what, what, what do you make it about as I said before certain people came who, who knew came to the conclusion that this was a deliberate action from the highest authority of the British government in order to get the Irish government to seal the border because at the time the IRA were going north causing damage and then sneaking back to the south the border was porous yes not all uh, you know not yes. all roads had uh, yes. customs points yes so this was an attempt to force the Irish government to uh, um, yes. tighten the border 
And because they, they obviously picked the most popular band in the country, country yes. Could, so that so many people would pay attention, you know? Yes. In other words, they were trying to frame them as terrorists. Correct. That is correct. Sean, um, you, we, we both watched the documentary, and it is a very, very, very sad story. Very a well hidden documentary in relation to the people that were involved mm -hmm. in this plan, mm -hmm. well planned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as I said, the only mistake they made is. In relation to that British, two witnesses left. The, the, yes, there were two witnesses left to continue on the story. In in in, in a good way, it's it, it be, be, be honest, yeah, it's a it's a good way because the story can be lived on. Um, Sean, in relation to this British soldier back in two thousand and something, there was new evidence given out in relation to uh, the British intelligence force were able to hold back so much documentation back for many years. But this new judge came along back in 2000 and he was able to release some documents. That's right. And this is the, in relation to the name of the English soldier was on present on the night, which the two survivors, um, when the investigation was going on for years and years and years, they mentioned this British soldier who was given direct orders. With a very uh, cultured English accent. And they tried to ignore it, they said there's no way British order, but eventually it broke. And the, there was new evidence given back in 2000, I don't know what year, 2005, whatever. And the name Captain Robert Nywark was given as the British soldier was here on that night. In charge. In charge. Now, there's a lot of people watching this documentary now that we're doing, and they'll say that Captain Robert Nywark was not in the country at the time. That excuse was put forward by the British Army itself on many occasions. Yes. Especially the Dublin and Monaghan bombings. Yes. No, he wasn't in the country at the time. He yes. was somewhere in the south of England. Mm -hmm. He wasn't in the country that night here at this scene. They put all sorts of excuses up mm -hmm. to say nothing to do but with But the it. British and Irish government had this well planned, do you think? The Irish had nothing to do with it, but the I certainly think there was a cover-up on both sides. Yeah, definitely a cover-up on both sides. But, Sean, the name Captain Robert Nyrak um, was given to the Miami show band survivors because uh, Stevens kept this investigation going, going, and going, and going. There was evidence given years ago, but the British intelligence hold it and freezed it. And the, the name yeah. Captain Robert Nyrak was given from the I... What you call it? What's the name? The IVC, or there's, there's another name for them. That name was released by them, saying that it was, it was yeah. Captain Robert Nair was in present. On what do you mean, the UBF? The UBF, yes. Protestant terrorist group. Yes. I think that Loyalist name... Group. Yes. Yeah. That, that name was given as Captain Robert Nair. He yeah. was the British soldier. Now, Captain Robert Nair was given direct orders to do. He was supposed to be going to some part of the country to pick up the devices and the guns. Mm -hmm. It was a well-planned situation that backfired on them. Yes. Now... The, as we says, the only mistake they did make was th they didn't finish off the two the Miami show bands here to continue on the story. They were able to tell the story. They were able to see who was present on the night. They were able to tell the story. And that is one of the reasons why Captain Robert Nyrak in the year 2000 name was given. But the, the Irish people knew who was Captain Robert Nyrak back in the 1976, 1977. Now, people will tell you that Captain Robert Nyrak was not present in Ireland. With my, I've done a small bit of investigation and I was speaking to somebody in Dundalk a couple of weeks ago and it says Captain Robert Nair was staying in, in a hotel. It wasn't a hotel, it was what you call it, the one place that you could stay overnight. Um, bed and breakfast. No, not bed and breakfast. Um, motel? No, not a motel. And there's a place there you can stay. I can't think of it. There's a place there you can stay overnight, but you have to be out. It's like a bed and breakfast, but there's another name for it. I can't think of it. Don't worry. A hostel. Correct. <laughs> a hostel. There you go, Anne Reese. I was told that Captain Robert Nyrak stayed in a hostel that night in Dundalk. And I was told that by a man in his 70s. And he said, how do you know? Because he said, I know because I've seen him in it. Christ. Um, I'm going to come forward a small bit. Ca uh, Captain Robert Nyrak in... He was playing in Belfast, mm -hmm. okay? Now, how I know this is because I've done another bit of investigation in my, in my own way. Captain Robert Nyrak and the British Intelligence Force back in the 70s used to have a night out, okay? 
And this night out was entertainment, believe it or not, Irish in, in tradition music, Irish folk songs, Irish rebel songs. He used to come to Ireland when he was a youngster. Correct, yes. There was some connection. Yes. So I was told that this band used to go up to Belfast in the 70s and every weekend they played Irish tradition music and Irish folk songs and Irish rag songs and English songs for the British Intelligence Force in Belfast. Never heard that one. So this is where Captain Robert Nyrak comes into this situation. Back in 1977, mm. in the Three Steps pub, Drum and Tea, yeah. Drum and Tea, there was a music played on this night and Captain Robert Nyrak was present, singing the rebel songs, the That's Irish right. songs. Yeah, he even sang the soldier song he in even, Irish. He even sang the Irish soldier song in Irish, correct. I was told by this man is that when he stopped playing this guitar, he went into the back kitchen and he says, your man with the green jacket, mm. he is Captain Robert Nyrak from the British Irish Intelligence Force. And the band says, how do you know? Because says, we go up every week and we play for this number of people. And Captain Robert Nyrek was able to come and say, We're, my name is Captain Robert Nyrek, I'm a British Intelligence Force, and thank you for coming. And he, he, the band got to know the British Intelligence Force from the music. And that's how he was able to pinpoint Captain Robert Nyrek. So a few phone calls were made and questioned the relation to that, and that's how Cap they pinpointed Captain Robert Nyrek. Well, one of the boys in the bar, you see, his cover was that he was from Belfast. Yes. He developed this Belfast accent. He was yes. trained to do yes. it. And he was looking for work as a bricklayer in yes. South Armagh. Mm. But in fact, he was working as an intelligence officer. Mm. And he was working both with the IRA mm. in South Armagh That's right. and the Loyalists. And he was telling one about the other. other he, he, he was like a triple agent. Yeah. Um, that's why the IRA didn't kill him. That's right, it yeah. was they ordinary let, people in the pub. Yeah, so what they did is they let the, the Irish people themselves... I'm just going to want to go down my hunker here. So what they did is they, they let the Irish people sort that out. Themselves. I, I think the Irish people had them sorted well out beforehand. But at the end of the day, Sean, what they did to the Miami show band was wrong. And Well, it's pu just pure murder. It's pure murder. That and was, it's state approved. Yeah. There's a there's conspiracy there. Yeah. Um, it's collusion. collusion there. Yeah. And but, but, but the the worst thing about it, all right. Okay. The, the British intelligence force and the Irish intelligence force, because there has to be some Irish involved in this, because English and Irish. The, the it, Why in the hell in the name of Jesus Christ? I'm going to say this now, right? A, a fantastic British uh, uh, and um, I would say how would I say British? I'm going to say a fantastic Irish band mixed with Protestant and Catholic people that went out from from all over Ireland playing beautiful music to the Irish people. Protestant and Catholic people just they didn't give a shit if you're black, Chinese, white, or everybody loved it. But they just pinpointed the Miami show band. They to, were the top band. They were the top but band. But there were lots of others. Well, there was lots of others. Also across yeah. the border to yeah, every time, say, including my own mother and father. Mm -hmm. They often they often come up there and they were pulled in by, for checkpoints and they had their bottles of whiskey and their bottles of putchine mm -hmm. and they were given the bottles to the soldiers and off we go. Bribery. 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 <laughs> so Sean, we, the both of us heard the story about the Miami show bands. It's a very, very sad, isn't it? Very, very sad. It's terribly sad on this spot now. Is it? I'm just going to move it here cl close to Sean. So, as we have Sean in the background, so here we go. Well, this is the little place here. In memory of the people who lost their lives, on the 31st of July 1975, may they rest in peace. And you can see there the little earphones there for playing music, and a bit of bit, bit, some little flowers here as well. And not only that, but the, myself and Sean, when we came here tonight, we let, we put we put ribbons on the trees. You can see where Sean is. There's all ribbons going all down the trees there, in in remembrance of the Miami show bands who were massively killed and slaughtered through their own death here, Sean, back in 1975. Very, on the 31st very of July. sad. Yes. Sean, would you agree, Sean, what I'm going to say next? It's how many years? The anniversary mass is just over. It's 42 years. I'm not good at the uh, well, 40, mental 40, 40 arithmetic. 40 odd years. Yeah, yeah, right? 40 odd anyway. Do you, would you not think, Sean, that all the years that the Miami show band were massacred here and killed, mm. the Irish people and the English people, we have a massive history of Irish music 
and we have great intelligence in Ireland. We do not think that the people and the government of Ireland would build a remembrance spot here in relation to the Miami show band, a wall about a six, remembrance. Yeah, yeah. In, and put all the faces of the people who were absolutely murdered and slaughtered here to death in, in back in 1975. Yeah. Mm. Would you would you agree, Sean, that they should do something? They should. Yeah, of I course. reckon they should do. And I definitely should say there should be something here. And all the pictures of the Miami Show band on a marble wall here in remark of respect. And if there's people, we tidied up when they arrived, didn't we? Yeah, all the bramble that had been cut off. Yeah, well, somebody came here when we were here to cut all the trees down here. But if there's people watching this, even from the Miami Show Band survivors, or if there's even people from RTE Television, even the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, if anybody's watching this in relation to the Miami Show Band, we, for God's sake, will you build something here in relation to the Maya Mishama and let the story be told from next generation to next generation build a marble wall here about 10 foot by 6 foot and put their faces off the Maya Mishama and in it and tell the story because it, it, it is a genuine Irish story I totally agree right Sean we, should we walk the field and show them where we're, 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 we're would you mind if I let you walk yeah that's fine yeah that's right so Sean you're going to take a break I'm just going to take a break and so Sean's going to take a break and what I'm going to do is Sean's going to relax there and um, all the breath with Sean takes a break there. I'm just going to take the spirit box with me as well um, I will do a spirit box session in it so Sean's got Sean would you like a drink or anything oh, do you, not that's what I'm, so I'm just going to show you where it is let's turn it around let me turn around the camera. Not ignoring chatting. So this is part A. So we see where Sean is. Sean is going to sit there, and you can see where the ribbons all around Sean, and you can see the sign here. This is where the old road was to Banbridge, and this is where the checkpoint would have been. The van would have been pulled in here, and the Myova show band would have been lined up along this road here, and the explosion would have happened exactly where Sean is standing, and the two survivors would have been thrown into that field in here. So Sean, you're okay for a few minutes. If you need a drink, I have a drink in the boot and sandwiches, but we'll sit. Uh, Coke. <laughs> Coke or water. <laughs> yeah. So that is it. I'm just going to take them to the field and then we'll finish off part A and we'll move up to part B then. So I'm going to leave Sean there for a few minutes. So I'm just going to show you the, the area here. I'm not ignoring chat, there are moderators and carning there. So that is the old road to head into Banbridge and the checkpoint would have been in around this locality up here the band would have pulled in here where Sean is and the explosion would have happened there and the Maiova show band would have been all killed at this location here so <coughs> we will do a spirit box session in a couple of minutes we're just going to walk into the field where it happened so welcome to part A we'll try to run you through as much as we can the weather conditions in Ireland are absolutely amazing as we speak um, it is only going to last till Tuesday and we're back to the rain again. So that is the old road, the old Ban Road. They should take you up to um, Banbridge. That was the old road back in its heyday. And uh, where the car is parked there. This is the locality here where the, the, the minibus would have been asked to, to pulled in here and uh, the checkpoint would have took the locality up there where Sean is and when the bomb blew off, that's where Sean was located, that's where it would have happened and the two survivors were thrown into the field. So you all know the story. So let's head back here. We're not ignoring Chatterton. We're not ignoring Chatterton. So we're just going to keep it there. So we're just going to take you to the locality. So we hope you're enjoying part A. We are going to do part B as well. We've been taking a break after part A and we've been moving on to the to a different uh, location. One of the reasons why we're going to a different location is because we want to wrap up this story here in relation to the Miami show band and Captain Robert Nyrak. So hello to everybody. Hello to all our moderators. Hello to Trevor. Hello to Anne Reeds. Hello to Gilligan. Hello to everybody who's watching us. Hello to Matt to UK. Hello to Carpy Chris. Hello to everybody who is watching us. Um, we are in Republic of Ireland. It's an absolutely beautiful day today. And we're doing a story in relation to the Miami show band and Captain Robert Nyrak. So we're just going to turn you around. And uh, let's show you some of the views around here. We're actually standing in right outside Northern Ireland Target Sport Association. That's where, it's, where, where we're located at the moment. So we're just going to walk up here and we're going to walk the field where it all happened. And then we'll go back to John and then we'll finish off part A and then we'll make our way to part B. And as I said, one of the reasons that we decided to do um, this investigation is because we're taking a wee break, as we said before. We're taking time out from the 7th about four or five weeks in relation to um, 
moving house. Lee is going to have an operation in Cumberland Hospital. And uh, Caroline, as I said, is going to have a new baby. And we're going to start out all that. But we will be live back, and I say, about roughly about the second week in October, and uh, we will do a Halloween special. And we're going to leave that to um, our moderators, so the moderators could tell us what would you like us to do a Halloween special, either in Ravensdale Woods, the Hellfire Club. You've seen all our videos for the last year, so that's all totally up to you guys where you want us to do it. So let's walk in this locality here. And if Trevor Howard is watching, my brother, make sure you contact me after Part B. So this is the, the area here. You can see where all the trees are here, guys. This is where the explosion would have happened. Now, it is many, many years ago this happened. Now, I'm looking up here with the trees, and there is some indication of, um, don't know how to contact you. Um, i tell you before we end this, tell her how you can contact me. Karen will give you a phone number there, and uh, our, our Facebook messenger. Trevor there but anyway we should go back here to the trees here these are the trees here and this is it's not really seeing any, any any evidence of where it would have happened go and find out where Sean is go find out where Sean is here I have Sean here now so Sean is up there so this is where it would have ha this, this is where it would have all happened the explosion would have happened up here and there were the two survivors of the Miami show would have been thrown out in here into this field here with the explosion so they would have been thrown out in around here um the survivors of the Miami show band, even though after the explosion, um, they would crawl down these ditches here uh, to get away from the explosion. And when they heard a direct order given from the British soldier on the night um, to leave nobody standing, the soldiers would have came down these banks here and shot the, the surviving members of the Miami showmen shot them to their death and murdered them here at this locality here. So that's th this is the area here where they would have been all shot dead and exploded right at this area where we're standing. So we just take this minute out just to, to take this area in where the Miami show band were all massacred and murdered to their death. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to do is one spirit box session here in, in relation to the Miami show band. Let's see, can we get it done? And then we'll head back to Sean. So spirit box up and loading. Get your earphones in for this one, guys, because you're going to hear better than I am. So we're going to do one spirit box session i did do a spirit box session here before and i the word i got was mafia in relation to the miami show event so we're just going to load up the spirit box and let's see what we get earphones in and we'll see how we get on so let's let's go let's do one spirit box session here good evening spirits my name is philip from paranormal tech i'm looking to try and communicate with the spirits in relation to the miami show band or even the two soldiers that planted the bomb back in 1974. Is there any spirits who wish to come forward and speak to Philip? Please use the device I have in hand and try and communicate with me, please. Can you come forward, please? So earphones in, guys. Just trying to get it up and running. You miss Carly now for this. So I'm just going to try and redo it again. So the sun knocked it off of me. Go back. Good evening, spirits. Bye. Any spirits relation to the Miami show band here? <laughs> What happened here? What happened here? Can any spirits come forward to use the device I have in my hand and try and tell me what happened here? For some reason or not, 
the spirit box won't work so we're going to have to try and reconnect the spirit box guys just give me a second to see what's going on it's going to try and connect this this boom box usually when this happens that's it's always a good sign I'm just going to try and connect the spirit box now guys, just give me a second now, just disconnect us, just going to try and reconnect us. So there we go, reconnect us. Good evening spirits, can you use the device I have in my hand to communicate with me please? For some way or another it won't work, so we're going to keep trying guys. Just give me a second guys and I'll see if I can get it connected. It's always the case, isn't it? So we're going to try and connect it again. Just going to see can I reconnect it. Uh, just give me a second guys, I'm going to try and move it up here. So I'm going to keep it on that view for a second and see can I get it connected to the Bluetooth. For some reason that it won't connect. And I have it switched on. And now it's in, it is connected. But when I um, when I play the spirit box, it doesn't seem to be working for me. So you're gonna play it, see what the sound come out. Okay, that's working. Don't you know? No, so just see can I get the spirit box working now? For some reason that. There you go. Good evening, spirits. Can you tell me it in relation to the Miami show band? What happened here back in 1974? Yeah. What happened here? Can you tell me what happened here? What happened here? Government. Did I hear government? Yes. Government came through. So he asked what happened here. Government came through the spirit box. Is there any spirits of the Miami show band here? Robert, our friend. Can you tell me what happened here? Can you, can you tell me what happened here back in 1974? <laughs> Miami show band were, were stopped uh, in a checkpoint. Uh, and the story goes that Robert and the Miami show band were murdered here in this spot. And Robert was screaming out for his mummy. Is there any spirits in relation to the Miami show band? Wish to come forward, please. Which Can you give us some clear indication of what happened here? And no. Who was the British soldier? Who was the British soldier that came here? I give direct orders. Miami, can you say the word My, Miami show band for me? Come on, don't be afraid of me. Hi, my name is Philip. I come in love, joy and respect. Me no harm to anybody. Can you try and communicate? Can you come forward, please? My name is Philip. In 1974, there was an explosion here and killed most of the Miami show band.
Is there any spirit in relation to this incident that happened back in 1970s? Can you come forward, please? For some reason on earth, it just won't. The spirit box won't. Come on. Try and communicate with me, please. The Miami Shore Band. Come on. Any spirits here in relation to the Miami Shore Band? And the spirit box is just rambling on. It's not responding the way I wanted to do. But we'll just keep refreshing it and we'll keep seeing where it goes out. We'll just go back. Something. Can you try and communicate with me, please? Yes. In relation to the Miami Show Band. Did you hear that corpses? <laughs> Miami Show Band. Can you say the can you say the name Miami Show Band for me? I thought I heard the word corpses come true. Any spirits here in relation to the Miami Show Band? Can you come forward, please? Hold on. I'm hold Can you say the word Miami Show Band? Can you, can, can you say Miami Show Band for me, please? It would mean an awful lot for me. I am a paranormal investigator researching evidence in the afterlife. Your body. Your body. Can you try and communicate with me before I move on? In, re in relation to the Miami Show Band? Was it? Was the soldier Captain Robert Nyrod? Yeah. I can't. I can't see check guys because the sun is so bright. So we just keep going until we go back to. We just keep it going. We're in the bunker. We're in the bunker. Did I hear that? The bank. The bank. What happened here? I heard something related to the bank. Couldn't be 100% sure because the cars are flying about up and down the road. So what we'll do is, I can't see chat either because the sun is so bright. I'm going to make my way back to Robert. We'll do one more spirit box session beside Robert and then we'll move on to Part B. Uh, we'll take a wee break then we we'll want to Part B. But, um, I thought I heard something in relation to bank. Uh, body, uh, government, and I don't know why else I heard that. You probably hear better than I am. It's very hard for me to hear it when the motorway and the cars are flying up and down. But that is to the field where the Miami Show Band were all shot to their death back in 1974 down there in that bank. So I can't see chat because the sun is so bright on the phone. But I'll go back where Sean is where I can see it. And we'll refresh the spirit box, making our way back to where the, the incident happened. Uh, is there any spirits in relation to the Miami show band that could come forward, please? <laughs> what happened here in 1974? Adventure. Adventure. Who was, who was involved in the, in the massacre of the Miami Show Band? Who, 
Work. Now. Adventure. Adventure. So we're going to make our way back to John. Yes. And we're going to do one more spirit box session down there. So I would see you here because I couldn't hear C yet in, in the chat. What were you picking up? You probably hear quicker than I am. So we're just going to go back here. We'll do one spirit box session beside Sean. Very hard to do it when the, the traffic is all heavy. So we'll make our way back to Sean now. And whenever we chat to Sean, I'll tell him what I picked up. So we're going to move over back. Very hard to see with the sun out there, Sean. I should get you to hold that second, Sean. And what I'm going to, just hold that there, Sean, for a second. I just got, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back onto uh, the a second. And what I want to do is just turn this around as well and drop all four legs down. Just give me a second, guys. I'm going to try and drop everything down so I can bring it down to Sean's level. And so you can see it's all talking. There you go. So, uh, I'm just going to turn on the camera. Turn around the camera as well. As well, guys. Just one second now. Turn around the camera. When you want the camera to turn around, Sean, it never turns around. <laughs> there you go. So, um, that was my spirit box session in relation to uh, that. Very hard to do a spirit box session here when you have the traffic flying up and down, Sean. But Sean, what I want to tell you is, when I did do the spirit box session down there, um, the guys in chat would probably hear better than I would, but uh, very hard to hear with traffic, but I got government. Government came through. I asked what happened here. The word government came through. The words bodies came through. And in the, in the embankment, what did that meant? In the embankment. That, that word came in true as well. Um, just want to know because we can't hear with the character. Did you, anybody pick anything up on the spirit box session? Because I'm sure I couldn't hear anything right or see anything with the, with the sun blaring. But I got government, embankment, and bodies. And that's what I got uh, through with that spirit box session. So let's do one more spirit box session here in relation to the Maya show band. And this is part A. Then we're going to move on from part A. We're going to take a wee break and join us in part B in Ravensdale's Wood. So we're just going to go back to the chat and see if there's anybody said in relation to the spirit box session because I couldn't hardly see it in Sean. Um, bye, guys. I will talk to you. Um, bye, Michael. Uh, chat to you soon. So Carly's talking to them all. Let's try and do one more spirit box session, Sean. It's very hard to do it here with the traffic. <laughs> So let's do one more. Good evening, spirits. Can you come forward, please? Connection. You know? Connection. So I tell you what I'm going to do is, I'm going to knock this one off, Sean. Okay. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to knock this one off. I'm going to use the other spirit box. Let's just get you to hold that a second, Sean. So I'm going to use another spirit box session for this one. Just give us two seconds. We, we'll, we'll move from um, this one to the next one. So we'll just move it forward, right, John? Just give me a second. We're just going to move. We're going to move. What we're going to do is we're going to move uh, onto this one, Sean, because it might be a, it might be a bit louder. So we're just going to just so so we can finish. That's it, Cromwell. Yeah. So we're going to use this one. See, does it better in relation to the last spirit box session? So this man's only gone for a wee there. So we're just going to turn this up. It might be a bit better. Good evening, spirits. In, in relation to the Miami show band, is there any spirits wish to come forward and speak to us, please? It's very hard to hear it with the traffic. In the show. Very, very hard to hear it. Uh, so you're, going to, you're going to have to take my word for it now, guys. We're going to actually Sean to get, you put that to you and see what you hear. So, in relation to the Miami show band, is there any spirits here willing to come forward and speak to myself and Sean before we go? What happened here in 1975? No, it's very hard, isn't it?
Accident. So Sean's only after hearing accident come through. Can you say the word Miami Show Band for us, please? Can you say the word Miami Show Band? Very hard to hear with the traffic here, guys, isn't it, Sean? So it's very, very hard to hear it with the traffic going up here. So we'll probably have better um, look in. Um, we'll probably have better look with it when we go into our into our part B. So what we're going to do is, guys, it's very, very hard to do a spear box session here. It is in a shot. Very, very hard to do a spear spear box session here. So we're going to move on to part B. And uh, before we move to part B, Sean, would you like to say anything in relation to part A, in relation to the Miami show band here? It's your first time. Would you well, like as say? you were down the field, yes, I was saying some prayers for the lost souls here, but they're not lost, but they haven't found the justice that they still deserve. Yes, which is the true story, and who was responsible for that? night's actions yes it led to their deaths that's what i prayed for and that's what i want to see happen yes. so in relation to the miami show band doing a spirit box session here it's very very hard to do it because you just cannot hear it with the traffic that's going up and down and uh, maybe come back at night time when the traffic will be less maybe that, that that is a possibility but we wanted to start our story today in relation to the Miami show band back in 1975. We were stopped in a British, no, we were once called it a British, we were stopped in um, an army checkpoint. And they thought it was army, the, but it was actually loyalists. So they actually thought it was an army. Dressed as army. They actually thought it was an army checkpoint, but it was a loyalist army dressed as army. And we, we know from, from now that it was a British soldier on President tonight that gave direct orders to no. leave nobody standing. So that is the story of part A. Myself and Sean are going to go to part B now and enjoy part B because it is relation to Captain Robert Nyrek where he was captured and we, 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 where we were bring to the bridge where he was um, brutally murdered. We'll do a spirit box session there and we'll go to the woods where um, this medium woman from England was supposed to be able to communicate with Captain Robert Nyrek and show where his body was located before we went to Greece. But we're going to save all that for part B. Um, just before we go, just, let's just show you, we can do a goodbye song here because we're not finishing, because we have to go to um, part B. So that is it, that is uh, roughly where you can see it there, that is where it was. And just let me show you where Sean goes. So um, in relation to my show band, this is, this, this is the little sign that they have left in remark respect of the Miami show band and they have little ribbons tied to the trees. That is the old road uh, to Branbridge before the motorway came into it and that is where it all happened. And this is where they were, they were pulled in on the night in question and this is where the van exploded and you know the story, we delivered as best as we could to you guys. Um, just before we go, um, my, my thoughts and prayers are with the surviving members of the Miami show band. What a terrible, 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 terrible thing to happen and what a way to carry on for the rest of your life in the thoughts what happened memory, yeah. uh, on the memory of 1975 what happened and to see your band members being shot and brutally murdered in the field what a story and what a story that should be lived on and passed from for the next generation to the next generation and all i can say in in, in mark respect of the miami show band is that uh, the sub, there should be something definitely built here in remarkable respect of the Miami show band to show the respect. So we're off to have a, a sandwich and a cup of tea in Ravensdale Woods. Join us for part B um, roughly in about a half an hour's time. It takes us half an hour to get there. We'll set up and have a cup of tea and a Coke and a sandwich and we'll continue on part B. So, Sean, um, would you like to say it before you go? Just say goodbye for the moment and thank you for... For watching for watching for watching part A and part B is coming up. This is all live and there's no it's all true stories. We tried to do a, a, a spirit box session, but there's no way you're going to hear it because there's too much noise going on. So before I say goodbye from me, it's goodbye from Sean. Goodbye. 
and it's goodbye from Philip and we see you in Part B roughly about half an hour's time make sure you watch Part B because more stories to enjoy so it's goodbye from me it's goodbye from Sean it's goodbye from Caroline in chat and we see you in Part B very soon Shlan Agus Bannath